If you are watching this video, and especially if you are in the United States and watching this video, there is a very good chance that you are wearing some form of denim right now. Denim is so popular in the United States that over 30% of Americans report wearing jeans pretty much every day. While jeans have always been pretty popular within specific groups, they have not always had the widespread popularity that we see denim have today. And in order to understand where that widespread popularity comes from, we need to start at the very beginning. In the 16th century in Genoa, Italy, there was a coarse textile that was being used to create a lot of different workwear. This was really popular amongst workers and France wanted to try and copy it. So this textile was being copied in the town of Nimes and sold as Serge de Nimes. And of course, de Nimes is where we get the term denim from. As this textile grew in popularity, we started to see it used by laborers in the American West. So miners, farmers, anybody who was working out West was wearing some form of denim. In 1873, Jacob Davis and Levi Strauss got a patent to sell workwear that was reinforced by rivets. If you have ever seen a pair of jeans with these little things on it and have wondered what the heck those are for, those are just to reinforce the stress points on the jeans to make them last a little bit longer. At this time in history, they actually weren't called jeans yet. These were being advertised as waist overalls and they were offered in a duck canvas and also in a denim. Workers everywhere ate this up. Everybody wanted one. They exploded in popularity, and this was also helped out by the fact that the American railroad system was being developed at this point, so there was easier access to these things across the country. Throughout the 1800s, denim was primarily worn by laborers, but that started to change at the turn of the century. From the 30s through the 50s, Western films were all the rage. And what happened a lot of times was wealthy Easterners would watch these films and feel very nostalgic for the Wild West, and then they would go on vacation out there. While on vacation, women also had the opportunity to kind of dress up as cowgirls and wear denim, which was not really a thing that was okay for them to wear in their regular everyday life back home. In 1935, Levi jeans kind of started to realize that maybe women were a very large potential untapped market and they started to produce Lady Levi's. So now we start to see women kind of starting to wear jeans here and there. This also begins to tie jeans more to fashion, whereas before this point, jeans were pretty much a utility item. In the 1950s, jeans start to get a bad boy reputation, and that is for a couple of different reasons. First, there was a very popular motorcycle culture in the U.S. at this time because men who had gone to fight in World War II and learned how to ride bikes while they were there came back and were riding motorcycles as a hobby. The popularity of motorcycle culture at the time led to films like Rebel Without a Cause starring James Dean and The Wild One starring Marlon Brando. Of course, we all know bikers had their denim and so that just really solidified denim as kind of a symbol of rebellion and a rejection of traditional dress codes. Denim continued to be pretty rebellious throughout the 60s as it became associated with anti-war protesters. During the 50s and 60s, denim was kind of something to be afraid of, so quite a few schools did not allow students to wear denim. Also in the 1960s, Levi's officially started to refer to their products as jeans. By the 1970s, jeans had evolved into a billion dollar industry. And of course, that would continue to grow exponentially with time. In the 80s, designers started to kind of hop on the denim trend and started offering designer jeans that were like super expensive. And this meant that now elites were also wearing jeans. This was kind of the start of when everybody, regardless of demographic, could reasonably be expected to own at least one item of denim. With everyone wearing jeans, there are a lot of different tastes to cater to. So we start to see jeans being offered in a ton of different styles at once, a ton of different products, and it's all about buying as much as you can. 
In the early days of denim, laborers would have worn their denim until they literally could not anymore, and even when it was not wearable, it probably would have been repurposed for some other use. With the rise of fast fashion, we see encouragement to buy as much as possible. It's no longer enough just to have one or two pairs of very nice jeans. You have to have all the styles and all the accessories as well. The other big issue with fast fashion is there is an immense difference in quality. So a lot of these items can't even stand up to being worn to the extent that they would have been in the past. While issues with fast fashion are obviously way more widespread than just denim, denim is impacted pretty hard by it. If you are really into denim and looking to reduce your waste, fear not because there are a couple of things that you can do. The best option in terms of reducing waste is to not buy anything at all. So if you have old jeans that you can maybe give an update, if there are holes in your jeans, maybe patch them up, look up an embroidery tutorial, something like that. This is also really cool because then you have a unique piece that nobody else in the entire world has. The other thing you can do if you really need some new pieces is just make an attempt to buy secondhand. And if you do buy things new, try and buy them from ethical sources. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching to the end. I'll post some resources up on prettiestpair.com and I will see you next week with a new video. Thanks so much for watching.